What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and given that Kali's primary weapon is so abysmally poor for pushing forward, I think it can be safely said that there is a really good chance that Kali players will be getting most of their kills with her secondary weapons instead. And since her secondaries are so important to her, the question is, which one should you pick? Sure, the semi-auto P226 Mark 25 used to be arguably one of the best pistols at the launch of Rainbow Six Siege, but does it stand any chance whatsoever against the C75 Auto? Let's compare the two guns stat by stat and find out. During the great machine pistol recoil nerf of Operation Grim Sky, the C75 Auto was the only gun of that class that got away relatively unscathed. It went from being the weakest secondary SMG due to its low fire rate and lack of attachments to quite probably the best once all of the other options became almost impossible to control during sustained bursts. The C-75 is undoubtedly a great gun, although there are situations in which it has shown some weaknesses. And it seems like Empire can't recover at this point. Shepard will watch that big window, and here comes the tension, here comes the push. Down on white stairs, waiting for the vault on in is Canadian. Will he be able to secure the kill? He sees the tracers go, oh, no! Scyther will win the fight! Well... It happens, right? Sometimes you miss a couple of shots, so what? It's not as if EG threw away five match point rounds in a row and then ended up losing the Pro League Season 9 final all because of one decision to switch to the C75. No, he takes one down! Oh! And a new empire will rise as you crown a new champion here in Milan! Oh... Well, okay then. So the fact remains that the C-75 is still just a secondary weapon after all, and despite the fact that sometimes things can go wrong, it's actually also quite a good one at that. But let's finally get to the stats to see how Kali's two sidearm options compare to one another. Here is the usual overview, and at first glance, this provides a relatively balanced picture of the two guns. The raw damage per shot is unsurprisingly better for the semi-auto pistol, and even though the damage drop-off distances are shorter for the pistol class than for the SMG class, you can see that the P226 remains more powerful than the C75 at all ranges. The rate of fire, on the other hand, is of course a slam dunk victory for the fully automatic C75, despite the fact that 1000 RPM isn't even that high for secondary SMGs in Rainbow Six Siege. I retested the fire rate for the P226 and, as in the past, managed to clock in varying rates up to around 490 odd RPM. Achieving this rate consistently under combat conditions is very challenging for mouse and keyboard users and probably near impossible with a controller, so I'm going to keep the stat at the more realistically achievable rate of 450 RPM that I've been using in my stat sheet for many seasons now. But whichever way you slice it, even if you're a literal machine at clicking mouse one, the fact remains that with the P226 you will never go beyond half of the fire rate of the C75. This fire rate advantage translates into a massive damage per second advantage for the C75 as well. The full auto machine pistol manages to dish out between around 55% and up to over 75% more damage every second compared to the semi-auto P226. When we look at the practical takedown power against full health opponents, the effectiveness seems split with the advantage going to either gun depending on what criteria we use. Because of the high damage, the P226 requires on average 1.33 shots less to down or kill an opponent at short range, and at long range after damage drop-off, that advantage rises to an average of 1.75 shots less across all armor classes and strike locations. But it's not as simple as that because of course the damage drop-off distances are different between the two guns. In the middle distance between 12 and 26 meters, the earlier damage drop-off of the P226 results in both guns needing the same number of shots to down or kill their opponents. So even though the semi-auto is definitely the more powerful gun both before and after drop-off, the advantage is not perfectly clear-cut. For the time to down or kill, the advantage switches back over to the C75. At all distances, the high fire rate of the machine pistol results in a takedown time that is on average around 100 milliseconds shorter at close ranges and a huge 237 milliseconds shorter at distance, and this time the damage drop-off curves actually work in favor of the winner of this category. 
But there is still one more caveat to look at. As you may know, each shot to a limb will do between 25% and 35% less than the full damage depending on the armor type of your target and up until Operation Shifting Tides that meant leg shots specifically because arms used to count towards the torso hitbox. But now that we have the new limb penetration system, arms have been bumped back down to limb status. Now for the P226, that won't make too much of a difference because pistols are in the simple penetration category, which means that the bullets will virtually overpenetrate the arms and then do the same damage as whichever body part is behind the arms. Most of the time, this will be the torso, resulting in full damage, but of course, in some situations, the bullet path might take it into the head of the opponent, which is of course a one-hit kill. The C-75, on the other hand, is in the no-penetration category, and that means that arm strikes will not over-penetrate. This results in a really random, unreliable nerf to the machine pistol class, because if you spray at the body of an opponent, there is a very good chance that at least some of your shots will be soaked up by the arms, and therefore do less damage. This results in extra shots to down or kill and therefore also longer times to take down your target and no matter how good your aim and recoil control, how many shots end up getting absorbed is going to be relatively random. I'm really not a fan of this solution. Arms were purposefully modeled to do the full damage for a reason in the past and now the machine pistols and also the shotguns have gone back to the bad old days of unreliable damage and it will certainly affect the effectiveness of the C-75 in comparison to the P-226. By how much though? Probably not enough to make the P-226 the more effective weapon, but results will vary from engagement to engagement and there is no reliable way of measuring the impact until Ubisoft have gathered some statistical data. And even then, it'll just be a statistical average and won't really tell you how each individual engagement will go. So at this stage, my conclusion would be that the C-75 is definitely the more effective weapon in terms of time to down or kill, with the caveat that it is also less reliable in terms of the strike location that each shot will get attributed to it. When we take all of these various stats into consideration, then I would say that the C-75 is still the clear winner in terms of overall takedown power. More damage output per second, much higher fire rate with all of the advantages that that brings, and much shorter times to down or kill just add up to a significantly more powerful weapon. Add onto that the higher capacity of 11 extra shots per magazine, and things are starting to look pretty good for the C-75 overall. But, as we know by now, power is not everything. Usability, target acquisition and controllability stats are also important and that is where the P226 starts to catch up. Both of the reload times are quicker for the semi-auto pistol, although in fairness to the C75, the tactical reload times for both guns are almost the same. Aiming in is almost twice as fast with the P226, which is definitely a bonus when you have to quickly react to an unexpected target or when you have to quickly aim in after switching from your main weapon. Nevertheless, 180 milliseconds is still pretty damn good, so even though this round goes to the P226, you'll still do pretty well with the C75. When it comes to hipfire spreads, the P226 is again in the lead overall. When you are stationary, so standing, kneeling, or prone, the difference between the two guns is relatively modest, but if you're moving, you can already start to see a significant difference. Once you start shooting, the full auto bloom of the C-75 is gigantic compared to the almost non-existent effect you get from the single fire of the P226. And sure, in theory you can also switch the C-75 over to single shot mode, but that would basically take away all of the advantages the gun has so far, so my advice would be, yeah, don't do that. Out of the box, the P226 is also far more controllable than the C75, and in addition to that, the pistol can also attach a muzzle brake, which then basically reduces the recoil down to almost zero. The only muzzle attachment the C75 gets is the suppressor, so nothing that will help with recoil. And while the recoil on the C75 might be better than any of the other secondary SMGs, it's still pretty challenging to get a handle on. At 10 meters, the groups already start to open up quite a bit, and long-range gunfights are definitely not advisable with this weapon. And after all that, there are a last couple of additional factors to consider. 
With both of these guns, you will have to rely on the out-of-the-box iron sights, and as you can see, the sight picture you get out of each gun differs in a number of aspects. The grip that Kali uses on each gun is a little different, and that means that the C75 is held much closer to the face, resulting in a much larger appearing gun model that blocks out more of the center of your screen when aiming down sights. The sights of the P226 themselves are also a little finer and obstruct less of your vision, but Kali's hands on the other hand are much higher up, and so you lose more vision on the bottom of your screen. Nevertheless, I think that the sight picture of the P226 definitely makes it easier to acquire and maintain your target. And then there is one more advantage that the pistol gets over the machine pistol. With the C75 in hand, Kali will move at the regular speed of a level 2 armor operator, because of course even secondary SMGs still count exactly the same as main weapons when it comes to operator movement speed. Sure, this is still better than running with a giant sniper rifle in your hands because Kali's main weapon actually comes with a 10% movement speed penalty. But if you pick the P226 instead, you will get an additional 5% movement speed bonus, making Kali basically as fast as the default speed of level 1 operators. And so, in final conclusion, we basically have a tale of two halves here. The C75 with its 1000 RPM fully automatic fire, higher DPS and higher capacity is undoubtedly the better option when just comparing the raw takedown power and all other aspects are disregarded. But when you look at all of the other factors that go into target acquisition and control, the P226 is just so much better. Faster ADS time, faster movement speed, smaller hip fire, much easier to control recoil and a better sight picture all add up to a gun that is much easier to use and I think it's fair to say that once you get out to something like 10 to 15 meters, these aim related factors actually become quite important. So, surprise surprise, the choice between the C75 and the P226 is maybe not the slam dunk for the machine pistol that you thought it might be. Undoubtedly, at very close ranges, the controllability is less important and the raw power of the C75 will make it the better choice for most players, and arguably if you get into longer range fights, then surely you should be using Kali's CSRX 300 anyway, right? So maybe the C75 does take the overall win after all but it's not nearly as straightforward as I was expecting it to be and I would be really interested in how other players would interpret these results. What are your thoughts on these guns? Which one have you been using? Let me know in the poll on screen or leave a comment to elaborate on your thoughts. And with that, as always, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.